Hello everybody, it's the uh, 21st of, no, 22nd of January today, um, so if you look at this video tomorrow when I upload it, it'll be yesterday, if that makes sense. Of course if you're looking at it uh, later in the week, or next month, or next year, um, it won't be yesterday, but that's another story, the magic of YouTube. It's funny to think that uh, barring apocalypse or some sort of major calamity, um, these videos could still be on YouTube or a version of it in a hundred years. There's a strange thought to have. Anyway, back to today's video, which I'm looking at Christmas trees into uh, bonsai trees again. And uh, some of you may remember this little tree which was one of those glitter covered things um, that I bought last Christmas and uh, I slip potted it into this um, which hard to believe I know larger pot because it was in a almost a thimble it was designed to go on the centerpiece of the table um, it's put on quite a lot of root growth this year and I'm thinking about putting it into a into a flatter bonsai pot um, I did have some Christmas as you may have already seen the uh, red label if you're not familiar with my videos are trees that I've identified that I'm going to repot come spring so this is one of them and I've also decided that I'm going to repot this tree which started as a similar sort of tree although it's a different species uh, a number of years ago now and it's in this pot which has a kind of belly um, and they can be a bit difficult to get in and out of if you let them get too root bound so I'm going to be repotting this tree and I'm thinking of putting it into this slightly larger square up pot um, and that will free up this pot which I can then put this tree in so let's having identified this as a tree I want to repot later in the spring give it a little red label always difficult to put labels into trees with bellies as well because um, you kind of need them to go around the outside of the root ball and they don't really want to because of the the belly in the pot but anyway I'm gonna shift this one to one side and uh, if I bring this one a little bit closer you can see that it has lots of new buds for next year but they're all on the ends um, so I'm going to be trimming that back but I have got some really nice tight short foliage on this tree and uh, that's in contrast with the next couple of trees that I'm going to show you I'm just going to give this tree a little nip out just to try and um, I don't want it expanding and getting lots of coarse growth again. So, as an example, I've just literally uh, taken the very end bud from that and I'm going to shorten some of these pieces back to a bud. I should do most of this when I repot this tree, but I'm just showing you that I just want to stop it extending too far. So let's move this out of the way um, and look at a couple of other trees that I particularly do want to work on today. So here's another one. This one has been in training for a few years, um, but it isn't looking anywhere near as healthy as the other one it's not that glorious um, green color and uh, I think the reason for that is that uh, this tree is really quite quite pot bound now so again another candidate for uh, a good repot in the spring and uh, later in the spring so another red label um, again that pot I think is too small and I think that's another reason why the tree is not looking so healthy so I'm looking 
to repot this tree into this pot. Now, uh, it is actual fact a little bit big for this tree, um, but it will give the tree a chance to put on some growth and some vigour and become a bit more healthy. Of course, in doing that, I'm going to lose tightness of growth, and this tree is not as tight as the other ones anyway. Um, so again, I'm not going to touch the um, the growth on this one at the moment, but I will be trimming that back a little bit when it goes into this pot, just for balance, but not a huge amount. Let's give you a quick 360 of that tree. Um, got a lot of potential, I think. It's hard to believe it was just a, a stick in a pot. You can see where the original straight trunk... Um, I chopped the original straight trunk many years ago now, at least four, I say many, at least four years ago. This was a side branch which was wired up. Okay, so I showed this one earlier, or in a video a couple of weeks ago as well, but um, this is another tree that I'm going to be repotting come spring. This is an Ormorica Christmas tree. It cost me £10 last year, 2020 in fact. So, um, sticking a red thing. The pot's had a beating, you can see. It's in a muddy sludge. And that was what it was potted in. It was a pot grown tree, I believe, but I'm going to have to try and get a lot of that gack off, not all of it, because you don't want to completely bare root an evergreen tree. Um, but yes, later in the spring, this is another tree I shall be tackling. Um, I'm kind of looking at it on a fairly regular basis, thinking what can I do with it. If you guys have got any ideas, let me know in the comments below. Um, it's not going to be a formal upright. I have a formal upright tree, which I'm very pleased with, which is a Sawara Cypress. You might have seen that video on my channel. Um, but overall the design doesn't excite me as much as some others. Um, so if you think you see anything in this, let me know. Of, um, at an intermediate stage. Um, again it was bought as one of those little almost tabletop decoration Christmas trees covered in glitter. Um, very little root uh, in a very little pot and it was grown on in a bigger pot for a year and allowed to, to grow a good healthy set of roots without doing much else to it. Um, and then it spent a couple of years in this shallow pot, um, again, just growing freely. Uh, as a result, what I've got is a lot of very long, very straight growths, um, and the tree has started to elongate out. And what I'm going to end up with, if I'm not careful, is a lot of deadwood in the centre, um, which I don't want. So. Let's just give you a quick 360. It's so nice to have a working turntable, but I definitely think I'm going to have to um, put a fixing method into it, because uh, sometimes I'm just looking and moving a branch and uh, the whole tree will turn, which isn't, isn't a great help. But anyway, so this is my, my perceived front for this tree, and I'm not really going for a a pine star bonsai or a traditional uh, left branch, right branch, back branch, left branch, back, right branch, back branch arrangement. Um, I did remove a few branches here and there where I had lots of branches growing in one spot. At the back at the very beginning, there's a, a scar in there somewhere. Um, but other than that, I've left the branches spaces as they are. And what I'm going to do for this tree now is set it up for 
starting into growth in spring, I'm going to chop back where I've got uh, two, three inches of straight growth. Um, all the buds in the end. Let me just show you that a bit closer. So you have um, all the buds out here. Um, now there's a one right in the back of there. Now people will tell you, you know, these trees don't grow onto the old wood and they don't. So long as you leave some green though, they are temp they will actually back bud occasionally on even on old wood, very rarely. Um, but they will certainly back bud in this area where there is green. So first thing I want to do is remove some of this foliage that's obscuring the trunk. Um, there's an area there where I've got three or four branches coming out of the same place and two of them are growing back across the trunk line so I'm just going to remove both of those and shorten that. I'm going to take off that piece. Take that off. And actually that's directionally pruned all the growth that's remaining there in this direction and uh, opened up that section of trunk quite nicely. And do the same here. That's better. Um, gradually exposing the trunk. So you can see it's got some a little bit of movement. It's a little bit straight, but at an angle, and then it goes off to the to the right. I'm going to remove this forward facing forward facing branch in its entirety um, it's just spoils the line somewhat okay that's better always conscious that sometimes I put my arm in the way but I do try not to I promise okay so there's my front I'm sure the camera's getting my front as I look yeah so um, gonna have to do something about this long top um, I think I'm going to cut it back but I think I want to lose it. No, I, I could gin it, but I think if I come in from behind with my angled cutters, I can lose that discreetly. And then this branch can be wired up in its place. Oops. Take that off, it's growing in the wrong direction shorten that shorten that shorten that okay a little piece of wire these are can be quite difficult to wire because you don't want to trap the needles um, and because they're quite slow growing they also take a while set but actually I think I've got a piece of bare wood that's flexible enough that I don't need to touch the part of the tree with the needle uh, with the needles on and I can still get it um, yeah still get it to wire up into place um, I'm now going to shorten that as well Just 
bring this tree back in. I'm going to go around now and just come back to the apex in a minute. I'm having to think about it and look at it whilst I'm trimming, but I'm just trimming back these, you know, these long straight pieces. They're just shouting immature tree. I'm probably cutting through the needles on the end um, where I'm cutting, but they will turn brown and drop off. Hopefully this tree will back bud quite happily. And as I say, that's what I'm hoping. There's no guarantees with these things. But I don't want them to just keep elongating and elongating. I do want this tree to have a natural look. I'm gonna lose that, really open up that trunk a little more. To that end, I'm trying to pull it back into a, a kind of a triangle without it looking like a Christmas tree. Still looking at that top and I'm still in several mines to exactly what I'm going to do with it, but uh, that's okay. Sometimes it's good to go into a tree with a full-on plan and I try usually to have a full-on plan. Um, but sometimes with a tree like this, I know what I want to achieve more than what I want to, or what I want to achieve for the plant, so that I know that I'm going to have this tighter foliage um, with buds back closer to the centre of the tree, rather than all on the ends and just a, uh, you know, a lot of dead wood in the centre. This might look like I'm taking off quite a lot of growth, and I guess I am. Um, but because I'm not touching the roots this year, I should be able to get away with it. Next year will be a different matter if I root prune it, which I probably will. It's been in this pot, as I say, a couple of years now. Sometimes the books give you the impression. When you read books, I know when I started um, growing trees, I had the impression that you had to root prune every year. And obviously, every time you root prune, you weaken your tree. And so, on any given year that you've root pruned your tree, you're starting with a stressed tree with reduced vigour. So if you really want to get some good development, it's good to allow them to to grow, fill their container, um, and then they can respond by growing at the top more vigorously once they've got a pot full of roots. Um, obviously if you leave it too long they become pot bound and they reduce vigour that way. So it's always a question of balance but then I guess our life is all about balance and uh, I still maintain that one of the chief causes of death amongst bonsai with new people going into the hobby and I included it myself um, is you know getting carried away and excited and wanting to work their trees and ending up overworking their trees.
which is quite often um, I feel the biggest cause of death especially when you buy a shop bought um, bonsai the sort that are mass produced for the Christmas market they're often very weak trees in very poor soil um, not the best quality to start with so once you overwork them then um, well then then toast really okay so back to my apex we have a kind of tea arrangement here so I'm going to remove that one I'm going to shorten that and that and that and those and that's all I'm going to do I'm not going to do any wiring or anything to this tree I'm quite happy that this is in an upright um, position as you go up a tree branches often are and uh, I have a quite good vague triangle I could possibly put a bit of wire just to bring that down a little more I think I will do that okay so I think I'm going to wire these two branches together this one in the back slightly in the back and uh, this one And this one I think I might put a little bit of wire on that as well um, possibly both of those and a little there okay it's not much movement but a little bit and that's just again to bring that branch round um, they talk about the branches coming forward to embrace you there we go okay so as you can see I've removed quite a lot of foliage um, I'm hoping that will result in just bringing it back with some finer tighter budding as always when I think I finish trimming I see a bit more to do piece going back there okay remembering what I said earlier about overworking the tree I'm gonna stop and uh, let's clear this foliage away from the base of the tree and I'll quickly show you the Nabari I think of all the um, specimens of Christmas tree that I've got to do with uh, to do some bonsai with can't get the words out um, this has got the best Nabari of the lot um, I'm really quite pleased with that um, not classical, not root, radial roots all the way around but good firm chunky roots that are holding on to the soil surface saying blow wind and uh, you ain't taking me down plus some nice little roots for the unwary to catch their foot under and trip on when you're out for a nice little walk and they, they're always there and you know they are so you, know, you don't often see that in bonsai uh, but there's a touch of realism for you As always, a quick 360. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. It's always nice to hear from you. Um, do you think I'm getting anywhere with these trees or not? As always, a quick 360. Let me know what you think down below in the comments always nice to hear from you 
Um, do you think I'm getting anywhere with these trees or not? Don't forget to do the YouTube things, the likes, the, um, the sharing, the commenting, especially the commenting. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please do take care of yourselves. Stay safe, everybody.